Hey, this is Jim McBride from the Bottle of Blues shop, and today I want to talk a little bit about some techniques to help you get that really big harmonica sound. Um, I just realized that I've got uh, the Beatles playing in the background. You guys can probably hear it, but I'm not going to get up and turn it off, so hopefully you like the Beatles. Um, so when I first learned to play, I would uh, watch videos and listen to instructional tapes, and I would, you know, have people teach me riffs, and I would learn a riff, and it would sound like this. It was okay. I worked on my tone. I got it, you know, a good single note and a, and you know, decent tone. But then I would hear somebody that was good play, and it would sound like this. What the heck? I'm playing the same notes they're, sound, they're playing, and it sounds like a completely different instrument. So it took me a long time to figure it out, but there's, there's a few techniques that can help you get that sound. So the first one I want to talk about, you know what, before I go down that road, the first thing I really want to talk about is tongue block versus puckering. So some guys are gonna tell you that the only way you're ever gonna get that big sound is if you tongue block, and that's just not true. There's lots of great players that can pucker, that pucker and get that really big sound. It's just different. It's a different technique, but it can be done. So let's put that to bed. Whether you tongue block, whether you pucker, you can get that big sound. So what are some of the techniques you need to learn? Well, uh, one of the easiest techniques to learn is double stops. A double stop is when you play two notes together instead of a single note. And uh, more typically what you would do is play a single note with part of the second note. So for example, uh, a couple places that sound really good to do this are four with a little bit of five and two with a little bit of three. So let's let's try the four. This is the, I'm gonna play the four by itself and then I'm gonna put a little bit of five in. Four alone, four with five. Big difference. Two draw. Two draw with a little bit of three. And I'm putting some vibrato on it too. Um, another technique in the tongue block world would be called uh, tongue slaps and tongue pulls. That's where you play, uh, let's say a tongue slap. That's where you play a group of notes quickly and then you slap your tongue down and play a single note. So I'll demonstrate. I'm going to play um, a group of notes around the four draw, and then I'm going to slap my tongue down and play just the four draw. That's a big sound. And you can do that puckering. I'm not a, a very good pucker player, but I'll, I'll try to do it. It didn't sound very good, but you can do it. Pucker players can do that. You open up, you play the adjacent notes, and then you close down on the note that you want to play. And that's a great technique. It's the difference between and you hear the difference? <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to play uh, four blow, four draw with tongue slaps. That's a big sound. Okay, another technique is uh, tongue blocked octaves. Now this is one of those things that you can only do with tongue blocking. And if you're a pucker player, that's fine, but you should at least learn enough tongue blocking to play octaves, because there's just no other way to do it. And this is a really great sound, a really big sound, that you're gonna wanna have in your bag of tricks. So I've got another video on that, so I won't really get into it much, but, um, a tongue blocked octave is when you play the same note um, an octave apart at the same time by blocking the notes in between with your tongue. So for example, um, one blow, four blow, or one draw and four draw while blocking the two and three. So let me demonstrate. So I'm going to play four draw by itself. Now I'm going to play one and four. It's a huge sound. I'm going to play six draw by itself. I'm 
Now I'm going to play the 3 6 tongue blocked octave. Here's a great one 2 and 5. It's not an octave because they're not the same note. Uh, I think it makes up a partial seventh chord, but it sounds so nasty. You've got to learn to do that. So if you don't know how to do that, go online, find a good video that shows you how to do it. Um, I have a video that talks about it you can look at. Um, it'll take a while to learn how to do it, but it's well worth learning. Um, another thing that you need to learn is vibrato. It's not an easy thing to learn. It takes time. Be patient. Work at it. There's lots of videos out there about how to play vibrato. I think Adam Gussow's got a few. Um, maybe John Gindick. Um, Ronnie Shellis, a lot of people. But it's the difference between and you really need that big vibrato to finish those riffs. Okay, I hope I've given you some things to think about and some things to practice. Um, have a great day. Uh, have a great holiday. Christmas is coming up. And keep on blowing that harp. Thanks.